what happens when Mercury, the god of messages, the messenger himself, the deliverer of news and secrets moves into the sign of that which is hidden from view, that which was underwater, that which you can't really see very well or know until Mercury dispels the mystery. That's what's happening as Mercury moves into the sign of Scorpio from the 29th of October to the 16th of November. And somewhere in our lives, each of us and collectively, we're going to see news information that brings big shock energies to the collective because of a Uranus component. Mercury gets tangled up with an eclipse to make matters even more intense, which is really, really also on the United States midterm elections day of November 7th, 8th, which is crazy, crazy intense energy with a Kazemi in the heart of the sun. Mercury also jumbles up with an eclipse. So get ready for that. And lastly, he finishes strong with a beautiful water trine at the end of his journey through Scorpio that brings a true sense of something good or lemonade from the lemons, right? Or sweetness of nectar from something of a difficult time. Now we're going to do all signs. That means you're going to listen for your rising sign. That's going to be the most accurate. Then you're going to listen for your sun sign, which will be also maybe about purpose, maybe about a father figure, moon sign, mother, mother figure, or how you feel about this time of this three-week transit. Hi there, though. If you're new to my channel, my name is Lori Lothi, and I am a Hellenistic astrologer using the old Scott style sky of the whole sign house system. This is a Western tropical zodiac. Did you realize that when you listen to your astrologers online and they talk about your rising sign or sun, they're actually actually as if they're casting your predictions using the whole sign house system which is the original house system of the ancients still used in india today why don't you go to my description box you can cast your chart in whole sign houses with a free tutorial i give it to you for free and show you how to also find your rising sign in the process and don't forget if you're listening with me now like like subscribe hit the bell for notifications and you may catch this before October 31st. And if you do, I have a big giveaway, uh, giving away 10 prizes, free readings, free courses and stuff like that. If you want to jump into the contest, subscribe. Tell me in the comments you subscribe. Second of all, jump into my Cosmic Moonshine newsletter. Once you're subscribed, you have a second ballot for the big live draw on October 31st. Let's get rolling and talk about the sky. Oh, so, you know, Mercury, by the way, let's talk about Mercury. He is a magician. He is the psychopomp. Uh, you know, helping souls go back and forth from the underworld. He was really good friends with Pluto, the god of the underworld, and he had free passage there. So he's good at going under the surface, digging below the scene world, what's beneath us. And when he's there, he does all kinds of cool things. But one of his big gigs in Scorpio is to reveal things that are hidden, particularly secrets. And so he could be doing some of that for the world. He also likes to straighten out the record. If you ever met somebody with Mercury and Scorpio, you know, you think, oh, it's a soft water sign. You know, they may communicate very softly. Not so much so. The Scorpio sign is about the tail of a scorpion with a stinger. They can have very sharp words. They also like to debate. They're very in investigative and sleuthy, and they want to understand how things really work. You know, Neo in the Matrix movie has a lot of Virgo, a lot of Scorpio and a lot of mercury mercury the magician neo scorpio what's the real world blue pill red pill you know so here we go mercury joins the fray where venus is and date out of dignity uh uranus they got a venus got a love and money sitting in there when he arrives um pre preceded him there the eclipse is going to be there on november 8th we have the sun there where he's meeting up with the sun in a kazemi uh really intense energies and uranus is across the way bringing a shock and awe elements to what is disclosed, discovered, or revealed. Now, each of our lives could have a small taste of that personal, you know, like yeah, a friend reveals a shocking secret to you or something, or your partner or whatever, or you discover some unknown thing that really surprises you. We'll go into the story as we do all signs, all right? But for the world, I'd like to make a few general thoughts or statements before we do all signs. And that is this, um, maybe Vladimir Putin is a Scorpio rising. Maybe, right? And technically his Mars is on Shala, the stinger of the scorpion. And so he's got a lot of connection to that, that sign by, um, by star, fixed star connection with his, with his Mars sitting there. But second of all, if he is a Venus in the first house ascendant uh, on the ascendant Scorpio rising, this is going to hit Vladimir Putin particularly strong as Mercury enters into the house of his identity and for until November 16th, amplifies his ability to use the power of speech, Mercury, in a very formidable way.
Now he could be threatening the world with that speech. He could be straightening the world out with that speech, that power of his speech. Um, and he could even be, um, Mercury is also about deals and negotiations. The art of the deal is Mercury, make, trying to forge a deal with the West around the incursion into the Ukraine. All of these things are possible. It's something big is happening for Vladimir Putin. All right. And the way this eclipse is squaring up on November the 8th, in basically what is going to amount to a T-square with Saturn in which Mercury gets all involved in this mess as well, then where we would go with that is maybe there will be Sun square Saturn, right? And that's how that eclipse will look, Moon square Saturn. Somebody solar, like a king or a leader or a prime minister, uh, stepping down, stepping away, being uh, in a difficult health situation, all of those things are possible. All right. I don't know which ones will happen or all of those may, but now somebody on my channel commented on my Mars video recently that I'm too negative and I'm, I'm not bringing in a positivity. I, I call it as I see it. I am a very predictive astrologer. There is value in that. You know, if I tell you that that is a bit of quicksand up ahead, you might avoid it. I'm not going to pretend that it's a, a, a calm water, tranquil blue beach, right? Why would I do that for you in a reading with me? Quite often I can see something like a pending death of a parent or grandparent in someone's chart. And I, 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 I say, are you welcoming information about potential hardships with the health of a parent or grandparent? And they'll often say, yes, of course. And then they'll say, yeah, thanks for giving me a warning. You know, I want to definitely be ready for that in case that happens. And then of course, they'll often get back and say, yes, my mother, father, grandfather, grandmother passed in that period. So let's not pretend that astrology is just all rainbows and unicorns and ascension and the higher vibrations of our star seed. I mean, that there's a place for that, but it's also showing us the mechanistic clock of the divine mind and how it moves through the collective sphere of all of this, all of us on this planet, as well as in our individual lives. Okay. Now, same with my Scorpio eclipse video. Some people thought it was all down or I'm a realistic type, but I try to bring some hope into the story. <laughs> and I think that I've got a blurry camera, but I can't tell. Um, so Lastly, Mercury, besides the news and a messenger, he, he rules the markets like the stock markets, you know, he's also, by the way, gender neutral, gender fluid, androgynous, neither male nor female, you know what I mean? I'm kind of laughing because this is a no makeup day. I'm literally sitting here, you know, with my hair kind of still in brush after my first morning client. And I don't want to get this thing out to you. I'm recording on October 25th. And by the way, this beautiful backdrop is the house I grew up in. I'm staying with my sister, Nancy in Northern Ontario, Canada, and she's an amazing healer, healing with with nancylin.com. I literally had a, a, a problem the other day. I won't tell you guys what it was, kind of personal. And I got on her table and rather than take antibiotics, she did a healing on me. And like three days later, I don't need those antibiotics. So healing with nancylin.com, if you want to check it out in the box, description box, um, she's a, a truly gifted healer and she her, her effects work on distance healing. That's how I was using her before I came here to visit her. Okay. So, um, it's just, yeah, she's living in the house that we grew up in. She inherited it from our parents or whatever. All right. So anything else I want to say before we go into all signs about this, there's some suggestion. Okay. I'll show you the sky. Okay. So you know what I'm talking about? Cause we'll be doing all signs in a minute. There is a suggestion as things progress along here that we'll have some this trine that finishes things up around November 12th, right? In fact, the trine starts to pick up. It's a big blue triangle there um, around November 12th to the 14th. Mercury, news and information, disclosures and revelations, Neptune, um, disinformation, misinformation, deception, uh, confusion. Neptune can be involved in viral plagues. And Athena, the goddess of truth, wisdom, and knowledge. Now, I'm going to give you a couple Mercury and Scorpio quotes that I dredged up from people who were born with Mercury and Scorpio, because it will relate to what is this like 12th, 13th, 14th of November, like infomercial of goodness that Mercury's trying to deliver that could be the end of some confusion, illusion, or delusion in the news cycle, or some revealing of information, okay, that's important for us to hear from the depths of the secretive, covert, stealthy Scorpio sign. So Mercury and Scorpio, John claude Van Damme, oh my gosh. So this quote is cool. He's that guy that does the movies where he's kind of like, uh, I don't know, a ninja actor, you know, a, a, what do you call it, martial artist. Um, and he's, and his, he's a Mercury and Scorpio. And his uh, phrase that I like is this, it's a quote, direct quote from him. And I got this from a website called liveabout.com. Because no matter what you say in life, the truth will always be the truth. You know, when someone is telling you the truth, you look in the eyes. 
Now it's true that people born with Mercury and Scorpio can be deceptive and learn the art of a good lie technique, probably pass a polygraph, but they're just as inclined to dig under the surface to find what's true and real and deliver it to you or me or the world. And secondly, Jeff Buckley is a musician with Scorpio Mercury placement. And his quote from this website, Live About, is also really good. Words are beautiful, but restricted. They're very masculine with a compact frame, but voice is over the dark, the place where that there's nothing to hang on. It comes from a part of yourself that simply knows, expresses itself, and is so he's talking about the difference between words and voice. And that's an interesting concept. It's just a Scorpio concept to parse the difference between word and voice because voice speaks words, but words and voice are different tone quality, you know, voice readers and face readers, people who do the art of, you know, telling if someone's lying are very tuned to the quality and the tonal quality of voice to tell if someone is also telling the truth. So we're almost going to say that maybe there's a truth teller vibe going on between the 12th and 14th as mercury lines up post eclipse on the 8th to you know talk to that athena she's like wisdom knowledge and and um investigation and strategy and mercury and she's also warrior energy but she's in cancer so you know as she's moving through the sign of cancer she's less inclined to be athena the warrior and maybe more athena uh, the disclosure of something, especially um, there's a water trine here. Mm -hmm. So something is flowing into the news cycle. And um, in the United States natal chart, which happens to be a um, Sag rising, this is the eighth house of the mar stock markets, okay? Um, and the equities markets and, and fiscal events that could be unfolding with a bit of a delivery of news that's needed in order to maybe stabilize something as an option here. The eighth house is also just a house of secrets. So Athena is up in there. Like he, she could represent a lawyer as well, sometimes digging up secrets for the world and things that we've been confused about. And lastly, you know, at the very end of this goodness around the 15th, Mercury trines Jupiter. It's certainly good news, positive news in the news cycle. Just after meeting with um, maybe a god involved in pandemics, there's lots of evidence for the Neptune being involved in viral uh, pandemics and plagues or waterborne plagues as well, like cholera, that when in fact, he was very active in the cholera epidemic in the 1850s or so. So very much likely that we're having some good news about our pandemic. I know there's a lot of fear because people are worried about the new variants that have immune escape coming out, a uh, complete immune escape and concern that they're more virulent. It probably will show that they have a lot of immune escape. And again, everybody gets COVID vaccinated or not, no, and people are dying less often, you know, high risk people will always be at risk, right? Frail, elderly, immune compromised. But for the most part, this probably will show up to be, um, what is it much to do about nothing? I'm really hoping that's true. And we'll see evidence of that coming through. There's a lot of distrust in the United States and Canada and other countries like the European Parliament with Pfizer's um, protocols, uh, lack of revelation, um, how there's big government uh, backroom deals with big pharmaceuticals that may have not had the interests of most people at heart, you know, and there's a lot of huge lawsuits going on right now that may be coming into the sphere of public knowledge in the middle of November onward. All right. And that may just be a little shocking when we see some things that come through. I don't know, but I'm just sharing some uh, other options. No, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Okay. I'm not paranoid either. All right. I'm just telling you uh, what is possible. All right, now we're going to do all signs. I hope that wasn't too long of an intro. If you're live with me here in my premiere, first of all, everybody, I always deliver this, like I'm recording October 24th. My Patreon community for five bucks a month always gets early access to every video I do for usually a minimum of 48 hours, quite often, you know, for even four days to a week in advance. So if you would like to always get this ad free content from me, it's ad free for Patreon. And it's always in advance of the public jump into my Patreon community for five bucks a month. Why not? Second of all, um, I do the premieres with you. So when this goes live, I'm in the chat box. And if that's the kind of thing intrigues you and you want to meet my community, there's a lot of steady, steadfast regulars in there and chat with me as we go through this video together, listening and commenting or just connecting, then please join in my premiere. If you're in my premiere now, and this is how you're hearing me, there's the like button, please hit it. Why? Because the algorithms love it. And that helps my channel grow and get out there to more people. All right. Let's, it's so simple. You hit a button and my channel succeeds. So it's not a big ask. <laughs> Sometimes I'll have like 180 people in the chat. And I'm like, but there's only 80 of you hit the like, please continue liking me. All right, let's get going. Um, 
And we're going to start, uh, I, you know what I always start with Aries, maybe I'll jumble it up and shock everybody. Let's start with Pisces today. I'm just in the mood. All right. So Pisces, sun, moon, and rising sign people. We are talking now. There's a big story going on, really big story before we get going. I don't want to give you short shrift on anything, but there's going to be a whole eclipse video. That'll be far, much better to listen to for the November 8th eclipse. All right. Way better. And the Mercury Kazemi than than me trying to go into the deep eclipse background in this shorter video. So instead I wanna cover the sort of gold and silver lining of goodness of this triangle that comes up for everybody. Okay, so that's what we're gonna talk about per sign and general theme. So the general theme for all you Pisces of having Mercury moving through the sign of your ninth house is it's going to open up potential downloads from your divine, um, you know, hotline to God. No, no, it's like talking with your spiritual advisor, even your academic advisor with very pointed, sharp, but important discussions, getting under the surface, doing research for a novel or a book, investigating something deeply, doing research for an assignment in university. But also when he's up here this time, he's really in a big action spot, right? These are where the eclipses have been going through your Pisces sky now, ever since, you know, the first energy field opened up in late November of 21. Does it all shut down to really to the end of 23? And so this is Mercury in a very intense sky story where you're letting go of ninth house things. Now, foreign lands to your birthplace is a ninth house thing. Some of you may be living abroad from where you were born and maybe by next July or the end of next year, you decide to move back to your homeland. That's just one example. This is also a letting go of travel visas and legal affairs. You may have to fight for something you want with a judge or court, but you may have a hard time and be disappointed maybe with some outcomes. On the other hand, Mercury here, can have big revelations where there's disclosures and legal matters that are going to be very important and work in your behalf. You know what I mean? Because there's a trine of flow between Mercury and your Piscean ascendant or sun and moon. So keep that in mind. It could be very fortifying of some legal breakthroughs. And it's also a flow from Mercury to your fifth house of your children and romance and sexuality and play and fun and creativity and your own independent business enterprise. So if you're a writer or an artist, this is really good for you. Obviously the muse will be all juiced up. Athena is often very bookish. What are you reading? What are you learning right now? Especially learning with that ninth house activation. And, you know, in essence, this is a good thing for most Pisces. You know, this whole this whole transit eclipse be damned, because it may be damned, this is actually more good than bad. You get the half full cup version of this because it does, in essence, give you a tremendous amount of flow, ease, luck, and opportunity, despite what is kind of a hardship vibe. And, you know, there is a kite for me, but I can't actually cover everything here. But I'll say this. Um, you could get some really big lift off near the end of the, this transit. So let's say between the 12th and the 16th of November regarding powerful friends and allies working on your behalf in order to give you favors that support you regarding themes of creativity, children, romance, health and vitality, and also things to do with father figures, you know, um, son is in the house of its joy for you. And in Vedic astrology, this is the house of the father. So some breakthroughs with a patriarchal or father figure that work really well on your behalf. With a Kazemi by Venus just before this on October 22nd, 3rd, there looks like you may be coming into some inheritance money as a Pisces or some bequeathment money as well, either from a woman or from a, a, um, a, a patriarchal family figure. Okay, keep that in mind because what Mercury could be doing here is delivering this information news or even resources, beginning to deliver some resources your way. Okay, let's uh, see if there's anything else I want to say. I don't think so. This is uh, my shorter transit videos. Um, yeah, I think that's what we're going to say. That was good for you, Pisces, mm -hmm. who got to go first for a change. Dispelling the illusion that I am always favoring the Aries people because I have an Aries sun and moon. And it's not true. I love everybody. <laughs> okay. November the 12th, 2022. Yeah, that's where I landed here. We're just looking at that big trine at the end of it. It kind of is in play November 12th to 16th with some love up, big love up with Jupiter involved in good news as well. All right, so let's talk about me, the Aries sun, moon people and Mercury and Athena. I have a big pile up in, Mer in Aries. 
so it's going to be most accurate for your rising sign. I said this in the beginning, but you can listen as a sun sign for me with four planets in Aries, my sun sign or Aries forecasts are accurate as all hell. This is our eighth house of other people's money where Mercury is traveling. And uh, the dates are in the beginning of the video, but it's October 29th to November 16th. And he does this every year. So it's not that rare, but he's colliding with eclipse territory where the south note of letting go, releasing and surrendering is sitting. And so there's monetary kind of uh, softening regarding like things like bank loans, mortgages, even debt. Now, here's a tricky thing. I have found that the south node through the house of debt can also mean a place of loose, the loosening of the debt. The Like, you know, think of the south node as where there's a drain like in a sink and you pull the plug and water's going down the drain or an inner tube or a car tire with the air going out. So um, for me as an Aries sun, moon, I'm losing that my debt, my debt is falling away. Um, and that would make sense for a lot of Aries in the sense that you can leverage wealth with this kind of sky. You can take a loan, get a credit card. Like I got one of those offers to, for my credit card to you know take as much money as I want, 0% interest for a year. Okay. Well, I haven't taken them up on it yet, but I might do that. And I might take that money I borrow and use it in the markets when the stocks dump next spring, right? Why not? So you're getting opportunities from Mercury and Scorpio to see a deeper strategy a clever strategy, a, a stealthy strategy to invest in money, to make more money, et cetera. Now, Mercury rules the markets and the stock markets are the eighth house. Now he is traveling with Venus. She's corrupted in her condition of uh, out of dignity in exile, but he's still not a bad placement. Mercury may be able to deliver some financial strategic um, possibilities and potentials at the end of this month, 12th to the 16th. Um, he's definitely telling secrets. The eighth house is already a house of secrets. Okay. And then we get Mercury spilling the beans. So what kind of secrets or big reveals are happening? I mean, the eighth house can be uh, your love partner has been keeping secrets from you. Your marriage partner has been keeping secrets from you. Your family of origin has deep, dark secrets. Mom and dad haven't told you. So secrets reveals can happen at this time of year, more so more than most, because Mercury was in the heart of the sun on seventh and eighth in a big eclipse. Well, well <laughs> hello, it's an eclipse. It's a new moon eclipse. It's definitely going to reveal something, a portal of weird energy just opened up in a secretive house um eighth house is occult stuff magic ritual magic tarot cards paranormal supernatural and talking to the dead wouldn't be surprised if for some of you this kind of big trine is mercury communing with you through the dream realm especially with neptune through your dreams at night you could have communion and conversations with ascended masters and passed on dead people this is a spiritual energy eight twelve and four are all moksha houses for spiritual liberation. So this is a very deep spiritual feeling for a lot of the Aries people of going really deep below the surface. And then with Athena, kind of the strategy, wisdom, and knowledge in the house of the family of origin, the nest, you couldn't get involved in some research about your ancestors or discover something you didn't know about your ancestral line, especially with the moon traveling here at one point around the 12th, that would be your mother's side of the family. Big reveals could come through. Um, I, I didn't mention this earlier. I did forget, but there will be an early storyline with Juno, the goddess committed partnership around November 1st to 3rd, where Mercury is trying to seal a deal on a business or love partnership through flowing communication. I just wanted to bring that up right now because if there have been any kind of uh, disclosures that have been hidden from a, a marriage partner, business partner, or dating partner, romantic partner, maybe November 1st and 3rd, there's the beginning of deeper conversations between you and a significant other that round out on the 12th to the 16th in a very positive way. I think that's everything. I didn't overdo you, Aries, because I am one of you. I think I kept it succinct. I mean, that's about it. Taurus, sun, moon, and rising sign. You know, guys, I don't have, I'm going to get some, I'm going to be right back. I need like a prop here. I'm, I'm not comfortable. I can't find my, I don't have all my stuff. Hang in there, Taurus. I'm on the way. Um, I need my sweatpants on. Oh. Try my tarot deck because basically 
I need my mic higher. I'm leaning down and I'm getting a neck ache. Uh, all right. Somebody gave me uh, negative feedback about my volume on my Venus video uh, in Venus the Scorpio. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. The mic just stopped working. I have no idea why. I test my mic before every recording session. I apologize for maybe three signs having lower volume. I know I, I find it interesting. Let me complain to Taurus <laughs> that people can bitch at you about things when you're putting out free content. Anyway, like, you know, like gnarly negative energy sometimes. I don't know. I shouldn't. I should say I've got a lot of areas and I could put my foot in my mouth quite often too. Okay. So, um, where, where are we? Taurus, sun, moon, and rising sign. Um, <laughs> uh, you guys are having this in the house of your marriage, your significant business partnerships, legal contracts and agreements, especially those that affect real estate. This is a very interesting time for you. I mean, because of that eclipse, November 7th and 8th, please be careful 10 days before and, and uh, 10 days after at least not to sign a legal contract to do with land, property, real estate, legacy wealth. Don't, don't, don't make a deal. I, I'm worried for a lot of Taurus rising, less so for sun and moon. Just not a good time to trust the sky. All right. It just, I mean, you do you, you know, don't listen to some astrologer on YouTube, but like, ah, you know, because Venus in that November 7th, 8th eclipse, you know, and the one on October 25th, especially, you know, she's very involved in a bit bad condition in Scorpio in the eclipse cycle. So the eclipse that's happening November 8th is right on the house of you opposite the house of legal agreements and contracts. But the eclipse on October 25th was in the house of legal agreements and contracts and is still spitting out its energy, its residue. Let's say it this way. You may have more clarity and more certainty about agreements, contracts, your marriage partner, your love partner, your love interest, your business partner or partners, you may begin to have more clarity after the November 7th, 8th eclipse and Mercury will go into the heart of the sun and get all the news that's fit to print. But before November 7th, October 20, let's say October 15th, the shadow of the eclipse to November 7th, at least, please be very careful regarding face value, promises, vows, oaths, and offers from a significant partner, business or love or deal making. Okay. Especially revolving property or real estate. That said, because I'm not being a, a, a negative Nelly here, you know, as someone accuses me of, I will say the positive things. Every year, Mar Mercury and Scorpio will go through your seventh house and it may not even be about you. It may be about your significant other. And they may be going through a time of working through some kind of a need to speak truth to power or to investigate something in their own lives or to go below the surface and do some research in some area to do with women or the feminine or money or love stories. That's all Venus nearby, right? So this is potentially something your partner is going through and it is not even about you this month, right? So October 28th to November 16th. But if it does involve you, remember that Scorpio has a stinger's tail of the scorpion and the speech that your partner may have, maybe some hard love, tough love storylines coming at you that may feel a little ouchy, a little stingy. But you know, you go through this once a year, it's just this time it's involving eclipses, which make them intensified and amplified. And lastly, if you're a Taurus rising and you are with somebody, this stresses your relationship. If this somebody has been in your life before January 18th as a, as a relationship per se, any relationships that started after January 18th for Taurus is are deeply karmatic and soulmated stuff that you're, you're going into with that person. So, you know, it all depends on when that relationship began. So if you're a single Taurus rising, looking for love, some of these eclipses can bring it on, especially the ones that involve Venus nearby. <laughs> so Venus is invisible. And so the eclipse of October 25th in particular was a uh, conjunct Venus. Venus is invisible, all right, invisible until early December, like the first week. So even if love is promised, don't expect it to show up in November necessarily. Okay. Your audience and storefront kind of virtual storefront, especially if you have things, products to sell messages to deliver to an audience. The, the buyers, the clients, you know, your Shopify store, that's kind of seventh house is 10th from 10th. Uh, Mercury could pick up your merc mercantile speed there, marketing, merchandising, and selling with that eclipse too, that's coming up uh, with Uranus opposite. And there's a big full moon 
in your first house opposite the sun in your seventh, this could be a huge escalation of your sales, marketing, merchandising as well. You may sell something basically, but because eclipse energy is involved, right? In the month of November, seventh and eighth, you know, that sale could happen anytime over the six months that follow. So, but definitely where we still have Mercury here is germane. And so until the 16th, that sweet little water trine at the end says good news around business deals, marketing and selling products, your marriage partner and your business partners and deal making as it connects to allies and friends in high places that support you from the house of good spirit, kind of like a fairy godfather looking over you, a friend or precision of power can really lean your way, especially with Jupiter. It can also be a leader, a judge, uh, something like that. I don't know. I just said judge, but there is a sextile to, to Pluto and a kite forming in the house of courts to so rulings, legal rulings in your favor coming up maybe on the 12th to the 16th of November with a love of from Athena, who's often a lawyer like energy of strategy and three dimensional chess playing and things to do with your local neighborhood or your online world, like the third house or siblings, aunts and uncles and cousins. Your third house is literally like the shops of tiendas, the stores, the restaurants that are nearby. All right. So keep that all in mind. Um, if you need to take a trip, a lot of flow to get a trip off the ground uh, as well on the 13th, 14th and 15th, whether you take it or plan it, Pluto is the part of a kind of kite that's forming in the house of foreign lands. You may begin to plan or set the dates for a foreign land journey. Gemini, sun, moon, and rising sign. The uh, movement of Mercury, October 29th to November 16th, which happens every year, is moving through your sixth house. Now, this is a place that is about your work life, you know, your daily grind, the habits and routines of work, the co worker space, the job. And it's also about your health and health routines. Now, Mercury here, is in the middle of a huge pileup and he may deliver news, right? And information and messages to do with job and career, but also maybe to do with health and health stuff. Now, Venus, even though she's a corrupted data file in Scorpio, she has her power. She's still a benefic, especially if you're born at night. She's your main fairy godmother and as opposed to Jupiter. And um, so you could get some good sweet news here being delivered because of this water trine where you were worried about a health issue, but then on the 14th, 15th, 16th, everything looks a little bit better than you imagine. I'll give me as an example, I have a progressed Gemini ascendant, but I'm going to get blood work done, just my yearly blood work, um, you know, sometime in about November 10th, 11th, and then maybe I'll get the results by this point and I'll feel really good about it, really. Um, and also, you know, Mercury is um, working with Neptune. So anything to do with your career, or your ambitions or your purpose it feels confusing, unsure, foggy, um, you know, fantastical, not realistic, and you've been unsure, unsure, a little confused, then this can be Mercury with his laser sharp tail of a scorpion, uh, clearing this up for you. And it could be an email, a phone call, or some news from a coworker, a colleague, or somebody in your workspace that, that helps support this. You know, there's also pets in the, uh, in the sixth house. Some of you might get a new pet uh, on the 13th, 14th, 15th. This is also the house of dating in some systems. So you may begin dating because Venus is there or something is very positive and fanciful and fruitful and deeply and mysterious about someone you're dating could involve reveals and secrets, Pluto in the eighth house, <laughs> I'm forming a kite. And um, it could also be a new level of sexual intimacy or romantic intimacy with tinges of Tantra and, you know, divine union and holy, holy, precious ascension level sexual intercourse. I mean, just saying because of the Pluto eighth and all of this, uh, but in a dating relationship, not, not within your marriage per se. And uh, Athena in the second house is okay. She's like strategic, bookish, knowledgeable. Um, she's kind of like a female um, disciplinarian sometimes. And uh, she's also a goddess of war and victory in Rome. So she's sitting down here in your second house. Now it could be sometimes funny because second house is earnings and she could be like, let's do the books, you know, let's straighten out the finances and no doubt about it. I'll be prepping my tax stuff already in November. So, I, cause I'm a progressed Gemini, but whatever you're doing here, it's really good for you taxes wise, because she's holding the bottom of what's a kite that's forming. It's good for tax guidance, tax breakthroughs, new wealth being generated from some area of your life. Certainly with Pluto, there could be an incoming bequeathment from a passage of somebody in 
your story like dying or bequeathing you money because Jupiter is involved as well. And if that happens, um, the 10th house is a father or father like figure in one system of understanding. So a patriarchal bequeathment coming through your sky. And, and given that the sun is involved with the Kazemi and the eclipse, I'll just say it for some Gemini rising, especially secondarily sun and moon, maybe what I'm seeing here mid-November is a possibility of a bequeathment uh, from a patriarchal male father, grandfather type figure. Already a news of that may come through mid-November, but it feels sweet and silver lining. So this person might've been elderly or we are expecting a passage uh, anyway. Cancer, sun, moon, and rising sign. Well, you are getting a lot of water flow, just like the Pisces people in a trine energy every year from Mercury at this around this time of year as it goes through Scorpio in the house of your children. Now, you know, I think astrologers in modern astrology make the chart a big psychological matrix map. And that's not how the ancients did it. They saw this as you are the first house and everything else is someone or something around you. <laughs> or the midheaven is yours as well. But you know what I mean? It's your reputation. Um, but I would say that this is could be about your children and what news will one of your children deliver mercury that may be a little sharp but also welcome and flowing to you for example and um you know mercury is a god of, of news but also a patron of travelers so maybe one of your kids is going to travel to see you or travel to a foreign land because of the in engagement with the ninth or a cancer rising if you want a leisure trip a fun pleasure trip that's the fifth house. Venus loves that. She's in her joy here. Mercury is the god of travelers, patron saint of travelers. And, um, you know, just after that eclipse, November 7th, 8th, you know, he's moving on, moving on. And maybe around the um, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, you are planning, plotting, or taking an overseas trip or getting the visa you need approved. If you have any legal matters that you need to straighten out or whatever, golden for legal judgments in your favor coming through at the end of this period of this transit. So again, 12th to the 16th, legal things straightening out, legal uncertainty and fog clearing as Mercury moves into a trine to Jupiter. If you're thinking of going back to university, you get, can get accepted at the school of your choice, or you could find that you get some kind of perks, the professor loves you up, or the educator gives you favors that make you jump for joy uh, around the 12th to the 16th. Thank you, Mercury. And, you know, I, I can't pretend that Mercury and Scorpio doesn't have a stinger on a speech pattern. So one of your children may deliver some messages right at you, right? But you can receive them well, even if they feel a little hard. Um, Athena in the house of you, you are being strategic. You are being a, a warrior for victory. You have got your uh, three-dimensional chess playing mind going. And you are looking at all angles of things to do with foreign lands, foreign travel, third marriages, ninth house, um, visas, court cases, and book publishing. Okay, you've got a strategic eye to what you need to do, um, and you're going to be doing really well because of that. And uh, that's about it. I mean, education, of course, because the ninth house is education. Some of you are definitely looking at educational opportunities coming off of this grand trine with an eye to um, also partnering maybe with others, business and, or marriage partners, in because there's Pluto kind of trying to find, form a kite in your seventh, all right? But I have to say one more thing, any cancers involved in legal mash nations there's a good good outcome here with pluto in the seventh and jupiter back ending into your ninth all right so some good news on the legal front so leo sun moon rising people in your sky what's happening is that you are encountering mercury every year roughly the same time moving through your fourth house of home the house of the mother land and real estate ancestors your private life your domestic life your secret hidden non-visible life the nest as i always say so especially if your ic and whole sign houses in the fourth house this is a deep nest energy so every year there's a transit of mercury through here this year though he's really involved in that eclipse cycle south node eclipse cycle through the fourth house can be letting go of your home now some people will sell a home move change their home by let's say the end of 23 because of this eclipse cycle but some of you may spend less time at home or focus less at home remember i said it's like the pulling the drain plug i think i said that for another sign and the water is going down the sink there's water dribbling away out of your fourth house of your nest so if you've been like one of those people who's been very cloistered or spends most of her time or his time at home or focus on people in the house you're not there you're focused on your career more so right the top of the sky the north node your your reputation you're killing it up here you're trying to be a career um boss babe or something and then 
And this energy of the trine says something like around the 12th to the 16th, you have good news around taxes, debt relief, especially debt relief moving debt, credit cards, like that kind of stuff, bank loans, cutting down the debt pretty dramatically, being able to leverage money, get that killer mortgage, uh, that low ticket, uh, you know, cash advance with no interest or whatever, or even some inheritances, not to scare you, but Jupiter here is a bequeathment transit. And he was in this part of your sky already. He was there in the first five months of 22. He was there for like three months and 21. So there's an ongoing potential for bequeathments for a lot of Leos as Jupiter is now back in here until December 20th. So don't be surprised if you don't get what I call chunky money coming your way. And um, this can also be, you know, tax rebates, tax refunds, grants, stipends, and an investment in the stock market kind of thing taken off for you, uh, you know, <laughs> going against the trend of the rest of the markets, right? Between the 12th and the 15th or 16th. Mercury is also able to deliver information news that was hidden from view. And where Mercury is sitting, it's ancestral or family of origin stuff about your mom, about your dad, about the ancestors up your line. What didn't you know? Because, you know, four, eight and 12 are hidden houses and it's all being activated in a trine with Mercury in the house of the ancestors. Slightly enlightening if you're into that meditation, enlightenment, spiritual awakening stuff. Hmm. Big energies here with Uranus involved in, a, in, a, in it on the sidelines as well. You could definitely end up with a big kaboom, like a spiritual awakening. <laughs> Why not? You know, it kind of sounds like an idea. And um, and because Pluto is kind of kite forming, and, and I don't know if you guys can see there's an attempt to form a kite here um, in your sixth house. It may look a lot like uh, some breakthroughs in your health successful health breakthroughs, um, ending health challenges through revealing and uncovering of what was really wrong all along, um, breaking through patterns of karma, ancestral self-defeat, sabotage and addictions that held you back and busting free, busting free, and also breakthroughs in potentially the work world as well. The work, get a new job, get an elevation in your job, things like that. And we're talking about that window of the end of the journey of, of Mercury through your fourth house, right? 12 to the 16th. All right, let's go with Virgo, sun, moon, and rising sign people. Virgo, what you've got going on here is Mercury is moving through your third house. And in that journey every year through this part of your sky, this time it's October 29th to November 16th, he always delivers some information, news, reveals, or directional reality around planning a trip and taking a trip, especially short distances, um, maybe corresponding, communicating, connecting with a sibling, but if not extended family, aunt, uncle, cousins, nieces, and nephews, skills-based learning, taking a course, enrolling in a course where you learn how to do something practical. And sometimes this can be your online platforms and social media world. It's also periodicals, newspapers, and magazines, if that's a part of your life. And if you're a writer, it can be the house of writing. Now with Mercury here, it's investigative writing, research writing, going deep with Mercury here. If it's about a sibling, there's a very deep and powerful and profound and transformative conversations going on with that sibling, perhaps during this window. But you know, I, there's a lot of gnarl in there. Remember I told you guys like, ah, but if you've been having any health challenges with your beloved, I mean, you're, you're, you're know, your main squeeze, the one you're with, your committed relationship. This is going to soften up in the first three days of November with Mercury in a beautiful, soulful trine to Juno. And you may recommit, redo your vows or come to terms with where you've been struggling together and renew the relationship, especially with Jupiter back ending into your seventh house until uh, December 20th. This can be like we were and maybe you were struggling with something, or maybe you just were doing fine, but you can you know, get engaged, uh, move in together, up level from dating to more commitment, things like that. And the beginning of that could be November 1st to 3rd, put that on your calendar. Secondly, you also have the experience of Mercury um, having come off of an eclipse um, on November 8th. Uh, and that eclipse is pretty intense. It activates shock and awe elements. So there may be some exciting but shocking news coming from a sibling. Now, it doesn't have to be bad because it's at the end of the month here. I'm in the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th. There's a, a, a flow and a kite that's forming. And so they may have some big news, but it may actually be more exciting than uh, upsetting. Let's put it that way. Or a sudden opportunity they didn't expect to see for some travel opportunity or some sudden unexpected developments coming through an educational access as well. Now you could say also, 
in my opinion, that with the Juno piece, I mean, not the Juno piece, I mean, with the um, Athena, we'll talk about Athena, the strategy and goddess, strategy, knowledge and wisdom goddess in the house of allies, some kind of strategic ally, a, a friend or a friend of a friend, or somebody could come in here and give you, particularly with the moon traveling here early on, some, a female friend giving you some guidance or some uh, um, information or some, hmm, support or favors the the benefit you really benefit you around travel and trips and education <clears throat> and relationship and agreements and contracts okay um, so stay tuned and see what happens you virgo people it's been hard on your health right you must admit for the last two and a half years with saturn moving through your sixth house i mean your health has been really challenged on and off with unusual health ailments or things you've had to, to dig into and slog away to, to resolve. So I want to add to you for you Virgos um, rising, especially, you know, Saturn station direct on the 23rd and doesn't go retrograde again as he leaves your health house. So this is going to be also just another story. I've said I have a separate video on it, but I want to bring that up for you now because he will go into your marriage house. And I'm talking about consolidating a relationship next March, which will, if you don't consolidate a significant relationship to the next level, get married, move in, commit, get engaged, then Saturn can exit you from that relationship next spring, starting March 7th. So you're kind of in this window of pooper get off the pot on something here libra sun moon and rising sign so libra we have your yearly mercury transit through the earnings possessions voice vocation calling and things you eat and put in your mouth second house is that too much information <laughs> and uh this is a journey that happens every year but this time it's happening in the eclipse zone right because of the eclipse cycle that's ongoing for 18 months so it's got a special flavor mercury coming through here during an eclipse in which the water is going down the drain libra in your earnings house <clears throat> in your possessions house divesting of possessions losing possessions selling possessions or, or income levels going down in some way hustle you don't have the hustle you have no hustle you don't want to hustle. You've lost your hustle. Uh, you know, you've lost your hustle. You, you might go through the motions, but you don't feel like you should be hustling. You really want to rely on money that you get through uh, your inheritances, your stock investments, uh, money making money for you. I mean, you're just like more oriented that way since January of this year into, you know, the end of next year, really. So this is Mercury saying, I've got news information for you. Um, he's a god of speech in a house of speech. You might hear some information. Someone may tell you something to do with improving your health because it's, he's in a trine at the uh, 12th to the 16th of the house of health or improving your job and getting a promotion or a raise moving strategically within a job structure, um, getting news about what you shouldn't eat or should eat in order to improve your health, what substances you should not be putting in your mouth to improve your health. Your health is getting better, though, if you are a Libra, because Jupiter backing into your sixth house finds solutions for health challenges ongoing until December 20th. <clears throat> Mercury in the house of speech could be a speech that you're giving or some speaking that you're doing that's pretty sharp, but needed. Where the sharpness goes is to the house of the mother, the house of the family of origin, and that people who are in your home life and your domestic life. Um, you also may find that you have this power up energy in your career. This trine is going to strategic goddess of three dimensional chess playing victory as well in war. And how are you going to be flowing into some victory in your workspace? Despite your lack of hustle, that's going to show up between the 12th and the 16th of the month, Mercury being one of the agents of delivering the news. I say with Mercury and Scorpio, it's a phone call, not an email, just to be clear. Um, that's the speech house. Or even a Zoom call or a, God forbid, IRL in real life, one-on-one -on -one conversation with a boss or authority figure in the workspace that can power up your wealth. Pluto at the tip of a kite. That's a good one, Libra. I don't think I have anything else to say. Certainly, if there's any secrets revealed, they're given to you directly from the horse's mouth. Someone's going to tell the truth. <laughs> so Scorpios, um, of course, sun, moon, but especially rising. This is very intense energy for you, directly headed at you around the 12th to the 16th, but it's good for you because it's a flowing water trine. Now, what's happening is that Mercury every year goes through the house of you and you're more enabled to give those sharper discussions, good voice, where your stinger can come out, but 
you know, you do this every year, and this is October 29th, this time to November 16th. It's not always the same dates, but you know, the gist is it's Scorpio season because Mercury is always near the sun. So it's kind of always when Scorpio sun is happening in the sky. And now you've got this kind of ability to speak powerfully what is true and what is needed to say what you mean and mean what you say to be revelatory and precise and incisive and investigative it may make you very investigative you may decide to do research on something to go sleuthing for some answers here um, that's a general theme but because we have eclipses here and you're letting go of a lot of self now eclipses to the first house are harder for your identity than anything else you don't know for sure who you're going to be at the at the end of the eclipse cycle, you're going to change your identity in a fundamental way. So I am, you know, I am a physician, I am a wife, I am a husband, whatever, some I ams are changing. But you're also more focused on your relationship. There's a lot of North Node energy in the seventh, maybe your business and your love partners and your clients and your marketplace are commanding your attention as you try to expand them. My son's a Scorpio rising and he's killing it in his sales job and a lot of attention's there and maybe in his relationship with his, his marriage partner as well, for all I know. So you're really focused on the other person, maybe pulling your attention as they do some erratic moves, especially business and love partners marriage partners in particular, live in marriages in particular. Um, you're more focused on other people, but you're also letting go of an identity. Now that said, Mercury is a part of a trine here because I'm talking about a larger eclipse cycle that says something around the 12th to the 16th loves you up. Now, honestly, it can be an opportunity to travel to a foreign land that you get your hands on around November 12th to the 16th. It's also a time where the flow is to the fifth house of, of love and romance and play and leisure and pleasure and leisure travel. And it looks a lot like with the moon up there, maybe a mother figure offers a, an opportunity for trips and travel. Maybe it involves siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins. Mm, maybe you uplevel your local environment and change your neighborhood. Um, these are options. I do think Jupiter back ending into your fifth house is very strong for new romance. If you're a single Scorpio, in comes um, a big love energy around 4, 12 to 16th of the month. And Mercury's a part of it. You might send emails, sign up for Tinder, whatever, Hinge, any of those apps. Uh, Pluto is in the house of dating apps. So if, if you're a single Scorpio, go for it. Hit the dating apps. You, you know, it's exciting energy mid-November. You never know. Uh, children and pregnancy. So if you are with somebody, like <laughs> if you have a uterus, <laughs> you could get pregnant during this transit of Jupiter. And Mercury could be uh, around the 12th, 13th, 14th, the understanding revelation and news that you are pregnant. Uh huh. And uh, also, you know, of course, if you're partnered with somebody with a uterus, they could get pregnant. So there you go. I hate the whole he, sure, him, there, they, there, bim, bams. Honestly, maybe I'm underwoke, <laughs> but I mean, people who can have babies, we can't say females anymore, right? So people who can literally physically have a child are at risk or at benefit, depending on your perspective, whether you want children and becoming pregnant. Um, there's a lot of accidental pregnancy possibilities here for Scorpio rising because of Uranus sextiling the house of fertility during this transit. This risk factor or yay you factor will happen to end by December 20th, okay? All right, I think that's oh, money, luck, money, luck, speculation, lottery wins, casinos, gaming, horse races, risky stock investments. Anyway, you might have some of that going on with Mercury delivering the good news that you won the lottery. Ha, huh, not bad, eh? So just for fun, maybe play the lottery near the 12th to the 16th of the month. But don't bet the bank on it and never follow astrological guidance for health or finances. That's my disclaimer, so I don't get kicked off of YouTube. Um, Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. Well, Sagittarius, this energy is a huge amount of flow going on in a very subtle place. Your fourth, eighth, and 12th house. Mercury every year goes through this part of your sky. Liberation, enlightenment, secrets revealed, deep mysteries, dreams at night, um, a karmic pattern, self-undoing and addictions. You certainly can blast through an addiction. Foreign lands, foreign travel can be in the 12th house as well. This looks like things like buying property in a foreign, foreign land, getting a re rental in a foreign land. You've got action in the tenancy six house. Um, there's like things to do with foreign lands and travel going on here in a flowing way, in a positive way between if you're Sagittarius rising, but also sun and moon between about that 12th to the 16th of the month. Good news. Maybe you find the perfect lease, the perfect contract, the perfect purchase, the perfect sale regarding property and mortgages and finances and all of those good things. 
Um, and like, I'm going to like say, you know, if that's stellium in your 12th house, a lot of past life stuff is being dredged up and maybe even like karmic stuff. And you may have a lot of subtle sense of your habits, addictions, and patterns regarding spending or saving or money that have kind of undone you? Where have you taken on ancestral patterns regarding wealth, money, prosperity beliefs, maybe that need to be unraveled now? Because there's a lot of stress going on with your significant other in the sky right now, if you're a Sag rising, especially but sun as well. And maybe some of that stress is stressing you out around things to do with property and about things to do with money. So you may have to uh, deal with how you are may be sabotaging yourself financially by getting into legal agreements, partnerships and contracts of any kind that are financially not sustainable or positive. That's one option. I do think that for the most part, the flow on the 12th to the 16th is offering up a bit of legacy wealth, residual money, goodness, like coming through money that doesn't feel hard to get, using money strategically, enhancing your finances strategically. But again, a lot of this can look like loans, mortgages, and bank loans, investments, and taking off things like that. But it's a very spiritual transit and a lot of it will feel very inward. Okay. It's a very go within here or go without of Mercury every year. This time it's October 29th to November 16th is in your 11th house of good spirit. Positive house brings luck, brings good things. Uh, it amplifies the karmic rewards and goodness of your life and shows you your deepest, truest hopes and wishes for your own story. I think here with Mercury, especially with Venus co-present, you're looking at allies who are probably female or, you know, women. And uh, coming into your story to support you, to give you some lift, some favors. You could definitely have some financial payouts, uh, great gains involving your career at this time, the 12th to the 16th, especially when it comes to primary love relationship or business agreements, there's an early sweet spot at the beginning of the month, but especially if those relationships also involve aunts, uncles, cousins, or siblings, um, that would be the first three days of November. But later on, as I said, the sweetness comes through the sky after the turbulent November 8th and 7th and 8th energies of the eclipse. And it looks to me like what the silver lining soft landing is, is that you may finalize some legal agreements or contracts in business arrangements or marriage arrangements and you may get some fortunate luck around things to do with travels and journeys where you can really resolve some challenges that may have been happening with a business, legal, or significant other relationship. You may find yourself flowing with fun and joy and activity with groups of people as well, and just enjoying this time in your local neighborhood environment or on a trip as well. There's a lot of escalation of uncertainty in the romance and children house, just as a principle in the backdrop of your sky, which will continue for quite a while actually. And so, but most intensely through to next midsummer of 23. So there could be some shock and awe developments regarding a child or a romantic situation. But with Pluto at the tip of a kite in the house of you, you are able to handle it. You've got the command structure of power in the house of you where whatever's going on, you're somehow making everything work in a way that is solid and commanding and powerful for you, for you, no matter what is going on in the turbulent parts of the sky. The 11th house is the eldest. If you have an eldest sibling in your family, some of what's going on on the, this goodness that's going on. So an eclipse cycle through the house of the eldest sibling for some Capricorns, especially because it's South Node, could mean a health challenge or even an end of life situation for an eldest sibling. And so keep that in mind, right? Because Jupiter can represent legacy wealth and maybe there's an inheritance that's trying to form in the sky with this kite. And the legal matters have to do with like, um, maybe your sibling leaves you something in a, in a bequeathment, right? That kind of thing. Maybe, maybe because the sun rules your house of inheritances and is the part of the eclipse cycle in the house of the eldest sibling. I wouldn't be surprised if an eldest sibling does pass, let's say by now uh, to next July or end of next year, that you'll, you'll be inheriting something from that eldest sibling, maybe just even a, a painting or a gift, but. I'm not going to make you worry about your sibling who's like 24 and you're 21. Okay. Don't stress there. I'm talking about life. Just life happens. It's probably when you're in your older years. 
Okay. Um, Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. Uh, me, I'm one of you. I've Saturn on my ascendant at 18 degrees. Yeah, you can see that Saturn's at 18 degrees right now. Holy man, holy me. I'm really getting serious about my life. Um, so we've been going through Saturn in the house of us, all of us, us Aquarians now, especially rising uh, for like two and a half years, right? It was early dip in, in 2020 during the year of our pandemic. Then since December of 20. All through 21 into 22, we have this Saturn transit. Did I get that right? Yeah, December of 20, all through. Oh my God, my brain is offline. I had COVID. Yeah. So let me get that right. Um, yes. Yeah. Saturn went into Aquarius for a little two degree dip. I think it was May to July or March to July of 20. Then in December of 20, he went back and then he's been there throughout 21 and 22. I think I got that right. Oh. Yeah, that is right. Brain on, brain on, brain turn on. And Saturn is sitting there. It's a backdrop for what's happening. I can't not mention it for the Aquarius is because it's there and there's erratic tension. But where are, do we want to live? You know that book, uh, Dr. Seuss, are you my mother? This is like, are you my mother or you're not my mother? What was really saying is, is are you my nest? Are you my nest? Are you my nest? Is this where I'm supposed to live? That's been going on for a lot of Aquarius rising, especially, but all Aquarians since 2018 with the early ingress for a few months of Uranus into the fourth house. Now, this time it's more intense because of Saturn square last year. And I've been moving all over the map and you have too. Now what's going on with Mercury? Mercury is in the earnings and uh, um, the earnings, possessions, and money-making house, where there's a south node trans. Oh, sorry. Mercury is in the 10th house of career in a trine to the earnings house. And this can bring for us a silver lining grand trine flow between the 12th and the 16th of the month regarding money opportunities, regarding career and money opportunities, reputation and money opportunities. Venus up here. She'll be up here for quite a while. Watch my Venus and Scorpio video. I talk about the grand silver lining in that one it gives us like publicity promotion um, makes us uh, quite visible in our career space favors from women in the career space yes venus and scorpio there are a downside to it i've noticed that i get a lot of more negative feedback in my comments on youtube for example or hate from women and challenges with women when venus goes through my career space every year up there but there's also always something good and with this scorpio trying to the second house of earnings look for some good flow around your money for sure regarding the work you're doing between the 12th and the 16th. Do you hear that? That's my sister, the healing with Nancy Lynn.com blending her morning smoothie after she just did a healing distance healing for a client. I don't know if you guys can hear it. So I'm going to pause for a minute. It's like a roaring background noise. <laughs> okay. And um, you could look for the, like a, a solar figure uh, sun, Venus, Mercury, top of the sky. This would be somebody in a powerful position of authority within your career field, uh, wanting to support you to create greater financial flow, or you could even approach them uh, to ask for a favor, for example. And finally, there's a lot of good flow to your house of health and work routines. This is you getting a real handle mid-October on a groove that's strategic, that's got victory all over it regarding health, regarding work routines, and regarding debt relief as well. You can relieve debt from eight or six, the sixth house. So I like this for a monetary debt relief because the activation of Jupiter can bring some new flow, cash infusions, more earnings, more money, more possessions your way. And it, it could fortify the ability to pay off a lot of debt or a bit of debt, whichever, by November 12th to November 16th. Now, even if it doesn't happen then that you pay it off, Jupiter seeding, something that you're doing that can bring great debt relief to you and amplify your money and your career status as well. And powerful power from Pluto in the 12th, as you have let go, released, surrendered, and kaboomed all of your hangups for self and doing your karmic junk in the closet, your self-defeating habits and patterns. You're getting ready Aquarius next March for Pluto in the house of you, but you had to do a lot of cosmic house cleaning. It was really intense. Oh, this is 2008 and it is finally coming to an end, but the kites suggest power is being sourced from deep soul level past life and karmic clearing parts of your sky. Hallelujah. Felt like a preacher at the end. I just shout over the blender.
All right. And we started with Pisces. So I'm done. Yay. Don't forget if you've been listening live, did you ever hit my like button? I always forget to remind you like subscribe, hit my button. It helps my channel grow. You know, I appreciate everybody in the chat, by the way, I might start a YouTube membership uh, function here. Um, I've got, you know, the same people that I get to know over and over again, one wise lady. Um, I get to know um, people like uh, 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 LA Taylor from Scotland. I get to know all of you guys, Tiffany, you know, I'm really enjoying that. We have uh, Mercury is a message. We have repeat people all the time who are forming connections with each other. What I think YouTube is meant to be now is community, not just one solo artist singing a diva song. And I always never get why people don't respond to their comments on YouTube. I find it irritating and I take the time to make a, a thoughtful comment on someone's channel and they don't even heart or like. So one thing I make sure I do when you comment, I do listen, read, I read all my comments, heart, like, you know, it's not that hard to do. You know, there's an app called Tube, YouTube studio. And when I get comments, I just scroll through them on my app and I can be in a supermarket line. I could be waiting in line for something. And you know, it, it's easy to fit in your life. I don't get why YouTube creators are lazy that way. Anyway, love you guys. Thanks for being here. See you soon. Ciao, ciao. Um, next up is my all signs videos for 2022 November. They'll be out sometime before I'd say the 28th, 29th of, of October. I'm a little behind, but that's life. Bye guys.